Hi, today I'm going to look at the matching of Wireshark traces and those from Process Monitor. So I'm following on from the session I did, the live Procmon demo that I did on LMTV. If you haven't seen that particular video, I'd encourage you to view that first. So if you go to Love My Tool and look for the Process Monitor demo, then that will give you a bit more background for this session. Today I'm going to look at TCP and UDP events. One thing I should warn you is that if you're using Procmon on a 32-bit Windows machine, you don't see the UDP events. So just something to be aware of. Now there are some idiosyncrasies with using Procmon timestamps and comparing those to Wireshark timestamps. So in this slide, what I'm showing is that here I'm making a send call. Uh, so this would be an application process making a send call across the API, maybe using WinSock. And that will result in a TCP segment being sent out from the PC to some distant device. Now the thing to note here is that we don't actually get a Procmon entry at that point in time. Then we see an acknowledgement come back from for this uh, TCP segment, and this could be a standalone acknowledgement with uh, TCP length of zero, or maybe it would be piggybacked on the back of data. But one way or another, we see an acknowledgement, and it's at that point that we see the TCP send entry in the trace. So that's important. Because we, we see the TCP entry in the trace, the timestamp is associated with the ACK. But the other thing to notice is that the timestamp is not perfectly matched to the Wireshark timestamp. Even if you have Process Monitor and Wireshark running on the same machine, you will get some uh, differences in the timestamps. Now, you could argue that maybe it's to do with the point at which the timestamp is generated, but the, the, you, you notice here that I'm indicating a difference of around 52 milliseconds, which was a difference I saw in a recent trace. 52 milliseconds is an eternity in computing time, so I'm not quite sure why there is this difference, but you will see a difference um, between these two timestamps. Now, what you also notice is that with a UDP send, we don't wait for the acknowledgement. So we'll send, we see a trace entry in the Procmon trace, say at midday, and say 52 milliseconds later, we actually see the packet in the Wireshark trace. Let's have a look at receive. Similar situation here, we make a receive call, and the receive call could have been made sometime uh, quite a lot earlier, um, because obviously we're just issuing a receive to wait for an incoming packet. And uh, here we see an incoming TCP segment, and that satisfies this outstanding receive. And it's when this is satisfied, it's at this point that we see the Procmon entry. Again, we're going to see time differences between the Wireshark timestamp and the Procmon timestamp. These differences I'm showing here are just indicative. Don't read anything into this. It could be anything from 10 milliseconds to 50 milliseconds and onwards. It may even be the other way around. I'm, I don't think there's any predictability on this, but we'll see how we can match the trace entries anyway. Um, with uh, UDP receive, we issue the receive call, just the same uh, scenario as the TCP receive. So here's the uh, setup that we have. We have a PC running Firefox and we're going to browse to this particular website and um, so I've, I've done that with a process monitor trace running and a Wireshark trace running. So let's look at the traces. We're going to start with the Wireshark trace. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for this actual string which is the, uh, the address of the website. And we can see here that we have a DNS query looking up the address of the website and you can see the address is returned here and then the very next thing in the trace is a connection to that 12830 
5237 address. So let's take a look at the uh, process monitor trace now. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off some of these trace entries. So I'm just left with this one, which is show network activity. I haven't filtered out any other processes at the moment, and I'll explain why in a second. I'm interested in a DNS lookup, which would be a UDP entry going to port 53, and it will be happening around 1736.13. So let's actually filter down and just look for operations that begin with UDP. Okay, so interesting thing here. Notice there aren't any UDP entries for Firefox, even though I was using Firefox to browse to the site. I'll explain that in a second. Let's actually see if we can find this entry. 1736.13.125. So I'm guessing that will be the entry there. So uh, from port 63065 to 53. And if we look at the UD port, UDP port 63065 to port 53. So there's the uh, DNS query, there's the response. And there's the corresponding DNS query, and there's the response. Now the reason it's coming from SVC host is because Firefox doesn't directly do its own DNS lookups. Um, it will just make an operating system call to uh, map a host name to an IP address. That might be satisfied out of the DNS cache. If it's not, then this particular service that's running in SVC host um, will go off and do the DNS lookup on behalf of Firefox. If we double click on this and we look at the process, you notice that it's an SVC host and it started with uh, this particular parameter, network service parameter. What we also notice if we look at the stack is that we're making DNS resolver calls. Okay, now let's go back and um, Okay, so what I wanted to show you here was that if I go into my services panel, control panel, you see that I've got something called DNS client. If I double click on that, you see that it starts an SVC host executable with the parameter that we saw earlier, actually in the uh, trace. So that's how that all hangs together. So let's now uh, remove the UDP part of this. We'll just switch that off temporarily. So then we've got, the next thing we've got here is a, a TCP copy event. Now, this is related to something called NetDMA. I haven't got time to go into NetDMA at the moment, so I'm going to just filter these out. This is just an acceleration technique. Um, but I'm going to exclude these events for the moment so that we can just look at the uh, the raw events. I've also got some stuff that's going on between my local loopback address, some devices on that. I'm going to eliminate those as well. So now what I see is I see the UDP receive. The next thing I see is a TCP connect. And lo and behold, the next thing in my trace if I just filter this down to just show TCP port 80 and DNS, you can see that immediately after the response to my DNS request, uh, I go straight into establishing a connection. So there you see the connect. Then we see a send, and sure enough, there's our send. Now I'm going to pick a, a random number out of this trace just to show you how you can quickly match up uh, entries. So let's choose, um, let's choose this entry here. So it has a length of 1098. Now if I go into this trace, I go back to the top of the trace and I do a find. So let's do a find for 
TCP oops TCP dot length equals one zero nine eight. Okay, so there's an entry seventeen thirty six thirteen five nine six seventeen thirty six thirteen five nine seven. So given this inaccuracy, that should be about right. Now I want us to focus on the TCP receives, and I'll explain why in a second. But if we look, we've got a receive here for 1098. The next receive should be 1460 bytes. So let's have a look. What's the next receive we've got? 1460 bytes. The next receive we have after that is 60 bytes. And sure enough, the next receive we have is 60. So you can use these lengths to match things up. Now the reason that I skipped over the send is because if I look at, I've got a send there of 287. But if I go backwards and forwards through these traces and if you keep a, uh, these trace entries and if you keep an eye on the length here, you notice nowhere in this area have I got one with a length of 287. So let's filter on TCP port 61592. So, uh, in fact, what I'm going to do TCP port 61592 but I'm also going to look for this 61591 which was the previous receive so let's uh, just add that in as well I'm cracking up let's put the equals in Okay, so let's go back to our 1098 packet. Um, let's do a find for that. So find for TCP length 1098, here it is. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go backwards through the trace and look for 287. So let's keep looking down here at this length. 287, there it is. So even though it appears after the receive in this trace, in the Procmon trace, in the Wireshark trace it appears before the receive. And this is a demonstration of this issue we have with the way that uh, Procmon registers the send, the completion of the send request. Because actually this isn't marked as sent until we receive an acknowledgement for it and that acknowledgement happens just there no sorry it doesn't it happens just there it's an acknowledgement by the receipt of data and you see that that actually happens after the entry for 1098 bytes so that's why we get this uh, this problem with packets in the procmon trace appearing in a different order to those in the Wireshark trace. Once more I've run out of time but I hope you can see that by using the length values and using focusing on received packets and using the timestamps and allowing a little for some variation in you know these inaccuracies in the timings we can actually quite successfully match up a Procmon trace and a Wireshark trace. Okay thanks a lot I'll see you soon.